from a child, she loved playing baby dolls. When the other girls got into the Barbie dolls, she wasn't interested. She wanted to do baby dolls. <laughs> she was the child most parents would dream of having. She was always getting along with, uh, with, you know, friends, classmates, and and sisters, even parents. <laughs> Born in Crown Point, Indiana in 1977, Tamara Sue Russell, who goes by Tammy, could be described as sweet and kind, nothing short of the perfect child, all characteristics that fostered a special bond with her sisters. We shared a room uh, when we were young because we needed to, but then later, uh, when we got older, we shared a room because we wanted to. Choose to ask for a baby for Christmas. <laughs> Um, and my other sister, she'll tell a story where when my mom told them um, that she was pregnant and going to have a baby, Tammy was just like, oh, thank you. After graduating from high school, Tammy worked at a drugstore where she met Park Kingery. They married and shortly after left Indiana for Edgefield County, South Carolina. But the distance was no match for such a close family. When I found out she was going to have a baby, we decided to move down here. Tammy's mother says her daughter's firstborn, Caitlin, made her the mother she always wanted to be since she was a child. Then came a son, Carter, followed by the couple's third child, Cameron. Her younger sister, Amy Thomas, says even with her own clan, there was still room in Tammy's heart for other kids. She treated my kids like her own. She I was excited about any time I was pregnant, she'd be like, I can't wait for the baby. She loves babies and kids. September 20th, 2014, Tammy Kingery went missing from her home on Mealing Road. Thomas remembers a conversation that took place one day prior. I was texting her. I was like, I know this is really short notice, but Tony's going to be, you know, in town for Braves game. If you could, would you be able to get off work? And maybe we could meet in Atlanta and just see each other for the weekend. While she tried to get someone to pick up her shift for that Saturday, Thomas says she could not. So she went to work that morning at a nursing home in North Augusta. But a little more than an hour into her shift, she began to feel sick. She started taking her own blood pressure and then continued to do it. And it, each time she did it, the blood pressure was going up. Family members report co-workers told them she kept checking her blood pressure and even raised her voice at one point. They say her husband picked her up and took her home. Park called me after he got her home and Carter was going, the oldest son was going to mow my lawn so he brought him over here and he took the little one and did some errands and then came and picked up Carter after he mowed the lawn. Then um, he went home and right away he called me and it only takes me like 10 minutes to get there. So I just dropped everything, got in the car and went over. Cold Case Project sat down with Edgefield County Sheriff Jody Rowland, who was not with the office at that time, to learn more about that day. With the help of an investigator who was a deputy at the time, he says Kingery drove around looking for his wife on her normal walking area. He called the agency for help and to report her missing after failing to find her where she said she would be going. I found a, a note saying that she'd gone for a walk. She'd be back after a while. And after a while, uh, he got worried about, I believe. The sheriff's office responded, even calling in a helicopter search. And Kingery then notified the rest of his wife's family. He didn't want me to worry too much and didn't want me to drop everything and come right away. Uh, he felt like she would uh, be found uh, and, and we found well. I remember I was just really scared because she suffered with depression and and I was afraid that she had hurt herself, that she left the house and hurt herself. Keeping all options open and hoping for the best outcome, family, friends, and the fire department, as well as the sheriff's office, joined in on several searches of the Merriweather area. Her older sister recounts a suspicious find inside a shack near the Kingery home with a strong smell that she feels should have been explored more. They ended up finding um, 
a dead dog tied up in a trash bag and that's what the smell was um and then they also found a a bag um tied up with a a bowl and a sponge and some gloves allarding says police told them they discovered those dog remains and items before but did not feel it was connected to the case she and some family members grew weary that more should have been done with the investigation in case a killer was nearby i would bring concerns up to them and it didn't seem like they would respond and and i know they're doing other things and there's probably other things going on in the background but it didn't seem so to me i felt like as the mother they should have questioned me or asked me what maybe i thought about it or if what i noticed or anything but no one ever spoke to me and i was there all the time looking back sheriff roland says he would have treated tammy kingery's case not only as a missing persons case but also as a homicide in my opinion it was suspicious from day one i think uh, between the hours that the husband returned home and shortly after dark when you're out in the rural community uh, I, I think you can draw a line there uh, that, that you know something is truly not right we looked at all of the possibilities that law enforcement and family explored we've shared that tammy could have walked off having been clinically depressed started a new life or ended her life there's also the option that she was harmed by someone, either intentionally or someone who saw her out walking and used the moment as a crime of opportunity. The family also shared concern after Park Kingery's lie detector test results returned inconclusive. One of my greatest fears is always when you hear those stories about someone who is being kept by a criminal alive you always worry that what if she's still out there and we can't find her there were also reports from another story that tammy exchanged romantic text messages with two men but investigators cleared them of any involvement and carolyn russell says she still does not believe her daughter had time for an affair additionally tammy's family contends that she would never willingly leave them and her children and make the decision each day to stay out of their lives. The manner in which she left also raises a lot of questions. She didn't have her phone or her purse with her, and I just felt like that was really strange. Why? I kind of feel like something that stands out to me is why she wouldn't have, you know, texted Park to say, oh, hey, I'm going to go on a walk. That day is not lost on Tammy and Park's oldest daughter, Caitlin, who was 15 years old at the time. She's now enrolled in college. She describes her mother as the sweetest person, taking camping trips and always being happy with her loved ones. She shares this message with Cold Case Project. The night before, I begged my dad to spend the night with my friend Carla Moore, who lived right down the street. He reluctantly allowed me to go. The next morning, I woke up and checked my phone and saw a text from Dad saying, Come home now. Your mom is missing. I called him immediately and he answered and frantically told me what was going on and said the police were on their way to the house. He was running through the woods looking for her when he answered and begged me to go drive around immediately and look for her. Caitlin also says she remembers seeing a motorcycle with a woman riding on the back that appeared to be her mother. But when she and her friend tried to follow that bike, they lost it. She adds, now that there's a new sheriff for Edgefield County, I'm hoping they will reevaluate my mom's case and make an effort to investigate it more. Back to 2014, no tip, no piece of information, no piece of evidence, no, no, no work in progress has led to anything. South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, or SLED, came on to help investigate the case. The disadvantage is you, you bring SLED in with all of their wealth of, uh, of ability, but yet the, the case is so cold, there was honestly nothing for them to do except try to uh, create what was known and unknown out of 
the information that the sheriff's office had. And, and the sheriff's office just did not have uh, enough work to go on. What does justice and closure look like for your family? I don't know. I, I just wish we could, it would be comforting to know where she is or I, I still have a fear in my back of my head that someone has her somewhere that she can't escape or something. When you just don't know what happened, it can be, um, I don't want to say extra painful, but just um, a different kind of grief. Anyone with any information on Tammy Kingery's case can call the Edgefield County Sheriff's Office at 803-637-5337. Next time on the Cold Case Project, we take you on a very different case. A Jane Doe whose body was found in a dumpster in Jenkins County near Millen, Georgia in 1988. What family and law enforcement need to get justice and close the case?